Hi students, I want to go over this. How can a key be used to identify organisms? This is out of the Biology Dynamics of Life book and um, it illustrates well how a key can be used by scientists to figure out what animal or plant or otherwise that they're looking at. Um, first, you need to start by making a hypothesis about um, to describe how sharks can be identified with a key. And here is where you write your hypothesis. If you are one of my students, you know by now that you should start your hypothesis and make it a conditional statement. You can easily make it a conditional statement by starting it with the word if. So if um, a key is provided, then blah, 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 and you finish the rest. I will get you started with the key. Um, okay, so here's how you um, complete this lab. First, you should familiarize yourself with these parts of the shark, okay? And we're gonna refer back, especially know the different fins, um, and the gill slits are here. That's an important feature and where the mouth is is also an important feature. We're going to refer back to this shark and the diagram throughout the lab. Okay, you're going to go to the second page and we're going to look at our first um, shark right here, which is actually some kind of ray, which is in the shark family. Okay, so we're going to look at this shark here and then we need to go to the questions page, which is on page three, okay? This is our key. On the key, the first thing that says, you always start um, on in reading a key, you always start from the first descriptor. So just because you're on number one on the sharks doesn't mean that's why you're starting on number one. You start on number one on the key because you always start on number one. So we're going to look at these um, descriptors here and see if it matches our first um, shark, which is this number one ray. The body is kite-like in shape, if viewed from the top, or the body is not kite-like. Well, I would say that this body is kite-like. And so I am going to do what it says. Body is kite-like in shape. Go to statement 12. So I'm gonna go all the way down to statement 12 here, and I'm gonna read the next one that says, small dorsal fin present near the tip of the tail, or small dorsal fin absent near the tip of the tail. Well, what's a dorsal fin? Let's go back to our um, shark description, which was here, and find out what a dorsal fin is. So um, a dorsal fin is like, a little fin that sticks off the top. So is there a small dorsal fin near the tip of the tail? I would say that there is a small dorsal fin near the tip of the tail. In fact, I would say there's two. So small dorsal fin present near the tip of the tail, and that's a yes. So it's family ragidae. So that's my answer, family ragidae. So I'm gonna write that down. Okay, great. So number one is Ragidae. Okay, so number two, we're gonna look at the second shark and what makes this shark very distinctive is this huge fin. So let's find out what that gigantic fin in the back is called. That huge one is called a caudal fin. So it has this huge caudal fin in the back. So let's look for that because that's going to be pretty distinctive. Again, we're on shark number two, but we're always going to start on statement one. The body is kite-like? No, the body's not kite-like. That's not shaped like a kite at all. So we're going to go to statement number two. Okay, statement number two says, pelvic fin absent and the nose is saw-like. Well, that nose isn't saw-like and a pelvic fin is right here and that's you know obviously it has a pelvic fin so pelvic fin is present yes it does have a pelvic fin so go to statement three 
on statement three, it has six or five gill slits. Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. It actually has five gill slits. So now it says go to statement four. This is a really long one. We're going to be on this forever. Okay. Only one dorsal fin is present or two dorsal fins. Let's see. The dorsal fin are these top fins. So he has one, two. So you follow this one. Two dorsal fins are present. Go to statement five. Statement five, mouth at the front of the head rather than on the underside. No, that looks like on the underside. Mouth in the back along the underside. That's what it should be. So go to statement six. Statement six said, head expanded on side with eyes at the end of each expansion. I think it's talking about something like that. And ours is not expanded with its eyes. Ours has normal eyes. So we're gonna say head not expanded. Go to statement seven. Statement said top half of caudal fin exactly the same size as the bottom half. Well, no, the top half is not the same size as the bottom half. Top half of the caudal fin is a different size shape from the bottom. So go to statement eight. Okay, statement eight. First dorsal fin. So let's find out what the first dorsal fin is, this one. So the first dorsal fin is very long. Almost half the length of the body. No. And then it says first dorsal fin length much less than half of the body. Okay, so we're going to go to statement nine. And then it said says on nine, caudal fin is very long, almost the entire length of the body. There it is. The caudal fin is very long. Yep, almost the length of the whole body. Almost. So I think we finally found it. It says family allopidae. So we're going to put family allopidae right here with two eyes right there. So we finally solved the second shark. And you can see we had to follow that key for a long time before we got it. Okay, now shark number three, guess where we're going to start on the key? We're going to start at statement number one, and you're going to read through. Is it kite-like? Is it not kite-like? And then you're going to follow what it does. If it has an answer there, then you write down the answer. But if it says go to the next statement and it tells you what statement to go to, then you need to go to that next statement. Once you're done with that, you can answer the questions below. And then your challenge at the end is to look at these fish and make your own key that goes with these fish. So they actually started you off. That's really nice. Fish with a long tube-like body or fish with a body that's not tube-like. Okay, what I would do is right here, I would use their statements here and I would say fish with a long tube-like body and then I would do dot, dot, dot. You could rewrite it down here, but I would just cheat and write it right here because it's already written out. Fish with a long tube-like body, I would say fish one. Fish with body shape not tube-like, go to statement, I would write dot, 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 go to statement and one. So I'm going to change this to statement zero or something like that. Something before one, so you know you start there. Okay, and then at statement one, you can say, um, you know, uh, fish with a large dot on its body. So fish with large dot. And then you can put dot, 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 fish, number five, okay? No dot on body. Go to statement two, okay? So you can go through and make your own. And then I do expect you to answer this question here about checking your hypothesis. However, you do not need to do this at the end. 
This has you check with a classmate. You don't need to do that. But I would recommend that you have somebody read through your key and see if it makes sense. Um, take care and good luck on this lab.